Well, how will Australia navigate these ties without impacting its own growth? I spoke with Australia's finance minister, Matthias Cormann, about Australia's economic goals and where it stands on US-China trade tensions. We are focused on uh, pursuing a pro-growth, pro-jobs, pro-opportunity uh, agenda, and a part of that we uh, are pursuing uh, reforms to make our tax system more growth friendly, a business tax cut, uh, reducing business taxes for all businesses down to 25 percent. We're pursuing an ambitious uh, free trade agenda that has included uh, finalizing free trade agreements with China, South Korea, Japan, and of course the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement with um, 11 countries, sadly not uh, involving uh, the United States. We're pursuing an ambitious uh, infrastructure program designed to get our products uh, to market at a lower cost, more efficiently, more safely. Uh, and uh, also we are focusing on making sure that uh, households and business can have access to affordable, reliable energy supplies, getting additional investment into uh, our energy generation uh, sector. So, I mean, there's at a high level uh, are some of the things that we've been doing. And speaking of trade ties, you mentioned the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP. What's your take on the U.S. joining? There was some renewed hope there for a minute. It seems like the U.S. president pulled back a bit. What are your thoughts? Uh, well, uh, our thoughts are uh, that, you know, we are in favor of open markets and free trade. We believe uh, that um, for Australia and we believe for countries around the world, including the United States, including China for that matter, uh, engaging in global trade has helped um, lift living standards. It has helped lift uh, hundreds of millions of uh, people in, in our respective countries uh, out of uh, poverty. Uh, it has helped uh, create opportunities for more jobs as uh, we have been able to sell more of our uh, products and services in our respective countries. It has helped our consumers get better access to uh, competitively priced products from other parts of the world. So we, we are unequivocally in favor of open markets and free trade. The Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, represents uh, an area of about $14 trillion worth of uh, GDP. It represents about a quarter of our uh, export volume goes into those uh, countries. We would um, welcome uh, the United States uh, rejoining. Uh, it'd be fantastic if they did, but it's entirely a matter for the United States. Uh, you know, obviously, um, you know, if um, at some point down the track the United States uh, decides that it is in their interest to be part of this uh, exciting, uh, rapidly growing part of the world, then, then we would welcome that. Now, China is Australia's biggest trade partner, both in terms of imports and exports. So how would you characterize this relationship? Well, it's an incredibly important bilateral relationship. It's, as you say, it is our most significant uh, trade relationship. I mean, <clears throat> the two most important economic relationships for Australia very clearly are our relationship with uh, China and our relationship with the United States. Um, the United States uh, is the biggest investor uh, in Australia, and um, you know, China is our biggest uh, uh, trading partner. So um, and the United States is our second biggest trading partner, for that matter. So they are uh, both very important economic relationships uh, for us. So does it put Australia in a difficult position when you see these rising trade tensions between two key trading partners for you? Well, we don't believe um, uh, increasing trade tensions are in anybody's interest. We don't believe it's in the interest of people in the United States. We don't believe it's in the interest of people in China. And indeed, it wouldn't be in the interest of people in uh, Australia. I mean, uh, nobody wins from uh, uh, trade wars. Uh, there are no winners from trade wars. And, uh, you know, we, we believe and we, we are quite quietly optimistic that the issues that have emerged in recent times that have been put on the table you know, in more recent times by the United States will be able to be worked through and, and that we will continue to focus uh, on a win-win way forward that will help to continue create uh, opportunities for people in, in all countries uh, to, to get ahead. Now, one of the issues that was raised by China's ambassador to Australia was this need that Australia needs to step up in terms of increasing mutual trust. What are your thoughts on that? We value our relationship with China. We, uh, as I've indicated to you before, it's, it's an important economic relationship for us. And, uh, you know, there have been some issues in recent times uh, that have come up and we'll work our way through those. And something else, we saw that, uh, we know that immigrants are responsible for a lot of the growth in Australia, but there is a call now for reforms. What sort of reforms would you like to see? Well, the government uh, is, uh, you know, very clearly uh, committed to our current uh, immigration program. It, Australia is a migrant country. Uh, Australia today is, um, has been uh, built uh, significantly. Uh, by uh, migrants that have come to Australia from all corners of the world. And, um, you know, Australia is fantastic. I'm a migrant to Australia. Um, 
And um, you know, Australia is a country where if, wherever you come from, if you come with the right attitude and with a, with a commitment to do the best you can to help make Australia a better place, uh, there is no limit to what you can achieve. And uh, our migration program is non-discriminatory. It's um, entirely focused on getting uh, the best uh, people to come and help us become an even better country. So um, from time to time, there are conversations about whether we should have uh, more or less and uh, what sort of um, uh, migrant mix we should attract. From our government's point of view, um, we believe that the um, level of intake is about right, uh, that we uh, should focus on, in particular, attracting uh, migra younger migrants with the sort of skills that um, are required in order to continue to grow and develop our economy, and um, that's, that's the way we're approaching it. And looking ahead, we saw that the IMF's gro growth outlook for Australia was at about 3%. How does that square up with how your government sees it, and what would really be driving that? The IMF uh, now has uh, upgraded their growth outlook, uh, both for, for the world and for Australia, uh, for, two or th for three consecutive um, updates now, which is, which is great. Uh, it is broadly in line with uh, where our uh, growth outlook is at. Um, and you know, we've gone, we are now in our 27th year of continuous growth in Australia, which uh, is a world record. Um, and obviously we're focused on making sure that that growth continues so that more jobs can be created so that Australians today and into the future uh, can have the best possible opportunity uh, to get ahead. Uh, the growth agenda that we talked about at the beginning of the interview is obviously a part of it, but as the uh, global economic growth outlook for the world improves. That is obviously good news for Australia. A stronger growth in the US, stronger growth across Europe, strong growth uh, continuing uh, in China, stronger growth now in uh, you know, places like Japan and strong growth in India. I mean, all of that is good, good for Australia. It gives us a lot of opportunity to sell our products and services into those markets.